Hello, everyone. My name is Elena Matveeva. Today, I'm going to talk about facilitation of learning in teenage classes. So, let's start. First of all, I would like to say a few words about myself. Well, actually, it is really important for, for understanding why uh, am I the person to talk about facilitation. So, let's have a look. Um, I started my professional journey as a university teacher and so my love towards um, teaching English for specific purposes, teaching business English and maybe some of the techniques I'm going to talk about today, they came from that experience probably. So I was a university teacher at the departments of economics, the department of IT. I started teaching adults and mostly I taught ESP, yeah, English for specific purposes and also business English. In 2014, I became the IETFL BSIG member. So for those who don't know, IETFL is International Association of Teachers of English as a Foreign Language. BSIG is Business English Special Interest Group. And I got really interested in teaching business English because in my opinion, uh, I thought that, well, I thought that uh, business English is actually something that is really useful for the person. It is something that... Um, people can learn and go and use in their real life. So for me, uh, one thing that is uh, maybe the most important in learning English is learning what is applicable in real life. Uh, then in 2015, I came to work for the Dmitry Nikitin School, but at the beginning, my uh, you know idea was to teach adult learners, to continue teaching the target group that I was really interested in teaching. And I never thought that uh, at one point I would start teaching teenagers. But uh, things happen. And uh, in 2016, one of my colleagues uh, asked me to cover for her because she was uh, going on a maternity leave. And she asked me to take uh, her teenage learners group. And at first, you know, I was really horrified because I have some really traumatic experience of teaching teenage learners in a village suburban school. So I hesitated for quite a while. Then I told, OK, told you, OK. But in my uh, head, I thought, OK, I would only teach for a couple of months, you know, till summer. So at that time, it was March, if I remember it correctly. And in September, I will go back to teaching my favorite adult learners. And because today I'm talking about teaching teenagers, that never happened. And I got excited and motivated uh, in teaching teenagers. I really love it. So, and today I'm going to share my experience, the experience of um, the Dmitry Nikitin School, of how we organize the process of, uh, you know, facilitation of learning uh, in teenage classes. And so I have been teaching teenagers since 2016. So I have acquired a kind of experience. And um, so that there, there is uh, to share with you. And beginning from 2020, um, we started together with Dmitry, we started writing materials uh, for our teenage learners uh, learning journals. Uh, this year we are writing the third edition. So today I'm going to share some activities from um, our materials as well. And also beginning from 2020, uh, I am a teacher trainer and I am going to say a few words about that at the end of the talk today. Okay, well, uh, how did it all start with facilitation? You know, the first time I heard the term facilitation was in 2016 when I won a scholarship. Uh, to attend IATFL conference. It was a business English special interest group facilitator scholarship. And at that time, I had no idea what it means, facilitator. Um, it took me six years, yeah, so to get to understand um, what facilitation is. And, uh, well, I came to realize that actually what we do uh, in our classes at the Dmitry Nikitin School can be called facilitation of learning. And here I really like the quote, uh, which you can see on the screen. I never teach my pupils. I only attempt to provide the conditions in which they can learn. So the idea of facilitation is basically to create those conditions in which our students would learn themselves. Uh, but just uh, let's start uh, little by little from the definition of facilitation. So speaking about any 
well, you know, any concept, any idea, uh, it's a good idea to start from the beginning, from uh, the definition. And being an English language teacher, of course, I went to an Oxford Advanced Learner's Dictionary uh, where I found uh, two definitions of a facilitator and of a process, what, is, what it means to facilitate. So let's have a look. You can see that here, facilitator is a person who helps somebody do something more easily by discussing problems, giving advance, advice rather than telling them what to do. And here I highlighted the word easily and easier because well, um, we are going, I'm going to speak today about how to organize the process of learning for our students so that they learn more effectively here yeah? and they do it easily. Yeah, so without too much stress, maybe, yeah, so and having uh, positive emotions in the process of learning. And to facilitate, to make an action or a process possible or easier. So I highlighted the word easily and easy and easy. So we are going to focus on that. Yes, how to make the process of learning for our students easier and more effective. All right. Well, oops, sorry. Uh, well, I'm going just to say a few words about how I organized my talk. So what I did was I went to, um, well, some materials that uh, mentioned the role of the facilitator and facilitation techniques in business. Yeah. And so I um, tried to see if they are applicable in teaching yeah, and in learning in our ELT sphere. So I've uh, just combined uh, all the materials and information and I'm going to share what I have found. Well, keeping in mind that we are speaking about English language teaching, yes, and about our classroom learning English. Хотите постоянно развиваться в преподавании иностранных языков? Школа Дмитрия Никитина проводит образовательные тренинги, конференции и курсы для преподавателей. Подробности о событиях можно узнать по ссылке в описании. Well, and the first most important thing that we have to uh, keep in mind that have, we have to make sure we have in our classroom are the rules. You know, so and so here um, we as facilitators, yeah, as facilitators for our students, we need to make sure that all students know and follow the rules. And I strongly believe that it is the starting point of the effective process. Well, I really love quotes, so I tried to find a couple of quotations uh, which could fit here. But you know what? When I uh, was looking for the quotes, all the quotes were about breaking the rules and very few quotes were about knowing and following the rules. So I just chose the ones that I believe reflect my idea. So the first one is know the rules well so that you can break them effectively. So first step is still knowing the rules, learning the rules and following the rules. And only then maybe, yeah, there will be time when we can become maybe experimental uh, with applying those rules. And one more, which I really like is, it's your life, make up your own rules. So we are going to see how we can apply that in an English language classroom. So what do we do at the Dimension Incident School? Uh, all um, groups of learners, well, we are speaking about teenagers now, yeah? So uh, speak about three levels of rules. Yeah, at the beginning in September. So when they have their first classes and our uh, first level uh, school rules, they are non-negotiable. They are written in our learning journal. And so the students have to follow them. They can't just not follow them. OK, so they, they are the rules which are fixed and which are non-negotiable. The second level are classroom rules. And so here what we do is we have a brainstorming session in a specific group and together in a group in a classroom, students decide what rules they would like to have in their classroom, then they vote, uh, and the rules that got the most votes, they become the classroom rules for the year. And here it is very important because after uh, the students chose the rules themselves and voted for the rules, they would be more eager to follow the rules. So they can't just say, no, I don't want to do that, because they made up the rules, and it really motivates them to follow the rules. 
And the third uh, level is agreement with myself, which is personal and private. And here the student uh, makes rules for themselves. Yes, of what they're going to do to learn English this year, what they're going to do to be successful. And they promise themselves to do this and that. And it's personal and it's private. The teacher is not going to check it, but it's for the student yeah, to understand that they are responsible 100% uh, for their learning. Yeah, So here uh, the teacher is responsible 100%, but also the student is responsible 100% for their learning. And it works really well. Uh, well, actually, from my experience, it helps to avoid some discipline problems as well. Uh, and the teacher, if you know there is the need, then the teacher can add maybe one rule to the classroom rules because the teacher also has a say. And if, for example, you as a teacher see that there is a rule that you want to be there, but it is not mentioned, only one rule can be like that. Yeah. So. Uh, the teacher also has a say and can add a rule to the classroom rules. But in my experience, I don't do that. I just let the students decide for themselves. And usually the rules that they come up with in classroom rules, they are really reasonable. And they remind each other during you know, our classes. They remind each other about the rules. They really get involved and you know, they, they do it with pleasure. So highly recommend it. Хотите постоянно развиваться в преподавании иностранных языков? Школа Дмитрия Никитина проводит образовательные тренинги, конференции и курсы для преподавателей. Подробности о событиях можно узнать по ссылке в описании. The next point is creating the atmosphere. So when we speak about facilitation of learning, we understand that our students are active in the process. Yeah? So It's not the teacher who is like imposing something on them. It's not the teacher who tells them how to do something. But the students, they are, uh, you know, um, well, maybe the, the main participants of the process. But for it to happen, there has to be a trust-based environment and atmosphere in which the students will be eager to share their opinions, their ideas, uh, they give their feedback. Yeah. So um, in order to do that, they have to feel relaxed. Okay, they, they can't just, you know, feel that they're afraid of making mistakes. And um, what should be done here? So first of all, of course, for the students to get to know each other and build trust. And well, because I'm working for a private language school, um, it's fine. Yeah. So uh, like it's not there. Um, it's it's just an extra activity. So they come there with pleasure and they get to know each other and they build their friendships and relationships. Uh, and there are not so many of them. Yeah, so it's kind of easier maybe to do it uh, because in the secondary school, for example, it might be a bit difficult because there are too many people and there might be a problem with, you know, creating this uh, trust-based environment, but it's definitely possible. Conflicts are resolved effectively. So, of course, there are conflicts. There will be. It's, uh, you know, our human communication. But he, as a teacher, as a facilitator, has this, uh, you know, mm, well, the teacher should do something here about <laughs> resolving conflicts effectively. So we just can't uh, just let that be, all right? If the teacher sees that there are conflicts and that something is going on, so then the teacher... Uh, not maybe um, telling the students what to do, but somehow maybe with questions, uh, they have to uh, resolve definitely the conflicts because the atmosphere should stay friendly, positive, and trust-based. I believe that the rules that we have just discussed, which are followed by all members of the group, are really helpful here. And we have, as facilitators, we have to make sure that all students are equally involved in the process of making decisions. And again, here, as a teacher, the teacher as a facilitator can organize that, yeah. Uh, so we, uh, in our classroom, should have a look who is talking a lot, who is not talking enough, and make sure that everybody inv is involved equally, no matter if, well, no matter what English language level they have, 
no matter what we think about their ideas here. Yeah. So here, the task of the facilitator, of the teacher, uh, is to involve everybody equally. And how do we do it uh, in uh, well, at the Dmitrinkitin School? Again, there are several levels, as you can see. I am really <laughs> uh, interested in creating the logical structures. So first, getting to know the school. And what can we do here? We have tours around the school where we show where everything is if we have a new student. Then in October, we have a quest around the school with different tasks uh, when our students um, take part in the quest in different uh, in, in groups of different levels and different ages. And at first it was maybe a little bit difficult, but uh, we believe that in this way they get to know um, students from different groups, students of different levels and different ages. And we saw how, for example, um, older teenagers started taking care of the younger ones and helping them. And somebody took the role of a facilitator of the process yeah, and helped the team to move towards the goal. So um, I strongly believe that it really helps to create the atmosphere. Getting to know each other project, uh, we have that project uh, in our, well, at the Dmitry Kitchen School. It happens at the, somewhere in the first month of uh, the academic year, where all uh, the students and all the staff uh, get to know each other. And there is like an interactive element to it. And it works really well. So we got really good feedback that, for example, um, our Czech students who are learning Czech, not English, they got to know English uh, students and uh, students got to know our office manager better and other teachers. So it was fun. And of course, in our classrooms, we have lo loads of activities which are aimed at getting to know the students in the group and getting to know the teacher. So I, 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 I can say we are really lucky here. Yeah. So as English language teachers, we're really lucky because we have a lot of opportunities for our students to get to know each other in the process of learning in the classroom. And uh, on the slide, you can see just a simple uh, version of uh, About Me worksheet, which we have included in the learning journal. So at the beginning, uh, the students fill it in with the information about themselves. You can see it's pretty basic so that all levels um, can do that. And then they mingle, share it with each other. And again, based on this worksheet, uh, for example, a teacher can come up with some interactive activities and uh, organize this, you know, getting to know each other activity in the group. Next important point is time management. And so here we teach our students and teachers here yeah, also have to learn that uh, both the teacher and the students are good at managing their time. What does it mean? Well, for the teacher, uh, it means that the teacher has a plan, yeah, but of course is ready to make changes. So the role of the facilitator basically is um, it is like a person who has a lot of scenarios, yeah, at hand and looking at how things go, uh, this plan can change, yeah. So plan B can be involved or like it can be used according to the reaction of the students. So the teacher should be flexible in that. Yes, of course, we have our lesson plan, which should be, yeah, like up to like really the, the timing should be really uh, checked. So we should understand how much we can manage in the classroom because very often teachers want to do so many things, but we only have, well, in our case, we have 90 minutes, which is quite a lot, but we have to be really careful with planning the time. And students also should little by little be taught to understand how much different activities require. And why is it important? It is important not only for classroom work, but also for their homework, yeah, for planning their work at home. If they understand how much um, this text, for example, reading the text, how much time it requires, or how much time they need to do some exercises. Or also, it is really important for the exam, yeah, because in the exam, there is nobody to manage their time for them. So they need to know that they have this and that amount of time for reading, yeah, and that will be important for all different types of exams uh, further in their life as well. 
Uh, and uh, managing time means not only managing time at the moment, but also like planning the activities during the day, during the week, finding time for self-study outside of class, which is of major importance in learning the language. Well, how do we involve that? What do we do at the Dmitry Kitten School? First of all, our favorite thing is the timers. Yeah, so in the picture, you can see different timers. We love using this time timer, which uh, where you can set the time and give the signal when the time is up. And little by little, uh, first of all, the teacher learns to understand how much time each activity involves because we can plan it one way in our head, but in reality, it might be different. And uh, well, students follow. They also learn little by little uh, how much every activity um, takes. And they become, well, they, they do some things faster, actually, just from experience. Uh, we speak about Pomodoro techniques with our students. Yeah, so, uh, well, as for me, uh, I don't use Pomodoro technique in class, but I encourage my students to use it outside of class when they have some projects to do. Uh, at some point, it's a good idea to delegate time management in class to students, yeah, and ask somebody to manage the time, to notice, and to plan, and uh, so that will also provide, you know, some skills which will be, um, which will be important in their future life. And very often, I ask the students to evaluate how much time this or that activity might take. Yeah, for example, okay, so you're going to discuss this and that. What do you think? How much time does it take? Yeah, or we are going to read the text. So what do you think? How much time will you have? And again, so little by little, they learn to fill the time. They learn to manage the time. And I believe it's really beneficial, not only for working in class, but uh, for taking exams and for planning that. Хотите постоянно развиваться в преподавании иностранных языков? Школа Дмитрия Никитина проводит образовательные тренинги, конференции и курсы для преподавателей. Подробности о событиях можно узнать по ссылке в описании. Another very important thing I believe is group dynamics, uh, so which means that uh, in class all students are actively involved in the process of studying and decision making. And well, where did that come from? Um, I, I go to observe the classes of teachers and uh, very often I can see that teachers get carried away, explaining a lot of things to individual students, you know, being really busy and focused on one student while the rest are just enjoying themselves, you know, doing whatever. And then teachers might complain that, okay, the discipline is awful, they don't listen, they don't do anything. So I believe that here organizing, um, working in pairs and groups, it might make uh, the life of a teacher easier. So, uh, well, what do we? What are we talking about here? So first of all, the teacher should track the energy level of the group and choose the activities accordingly. Yeah, so that is really important. The teacher should be flexible and ready to make changes to the lesson plan. I have already mentioned that according to the energy level of the group. Uh, students learn to give constructive feedback to their group mates. Uh, the opinions of uh, and ideas of all the students matter. Yeah. And of course, uh, students can work, yeah, are, are taught to work in pairs and groups effectively. And if we organize that, uh, well, group work, pair work, then a teacher will be, how to say it? So the role of a facilitator, yes, we can see it here. Yes, so the teacher can organize the work and then he is just on the side, yeah? Not like involved in, for example, explaining some things to one person, but when they're all working in pairs and groups, they can ask each other questions and the teacher has a chance to observe, to analyze, and then maybe get some material for error correction further. So it's really beneficial. Uh, yeah. How do we do that at the Dimension Kitchen School? So uh, first of all, we have retrospective sessions every three months. And during those, our students learn to give feedback yeah, to the teacher as well. And so here we also uh, look at the feedback scheme, what kind of feedback there exists here. 
uh, how to make it more specific, how to make it more constructive. Uh, the teachers uh, should uh, give opportunities to students to work in pairs and groups with different people, even if students might refuse at first. But we remember that we are preparing them for real life here. Yeah? And so they will have to talk to different people, no matter whether they like them or not. So it's a very good skill to practice in class. And here, the teacher as a facilitator should give clear instructions for the students to understand, to do the task effectively. Yeah. So you, if you remember in one of the first slides, uh, the definition of a facilitator was not telling them what to do. But in order for the students to do the activity effectively and to get the results, they must understand what they should do. Yeah, not to waste time trying to figure it out. So here, that's what I mean, clear instructions for the uh, effective work of students in class. All right. And finally, we come to uh, the final idea, which is the role of a teacher. And I really like this uh, statement. So not the sage on the stage, but the guide on the side. Yeah. So we are our task as teachers now is to change our attitude from I know it all, ask me, I am the only person who knows, to, well, we are all equal, okay, yeah, let's ask somebody else in the group, what do you think, and like redirecting this, um, you know, this uh, to the students, yeah, making them responsible for their learning and making them feeling, well, making them feel important that they know as well, yeah, uh, so, it is not very easy actually to change that role. So the teacher has um, a neutral position here and the teacher doesn't impose his or her thoughts and ideas on the students. It's not easy to do. Well, the teacher encourages the autonomy of the students. Yeah, the teacher has a minimal effect on group results. So here, 100% on the teacher and 100% on the students. And we should not take that from our students. They are responsible for their results. And teacher genuinely believes in the success of the group. So if you would like to uh, leave some comments, or contact me, or if you have thoughts and ideas to share, here are my contacts. And thank you very much for listening.